Hello everyone, welcome to another video. <laughs> Uh, this video here, I'm going to respond to quite a different type of TV appearance I had. This was a day before this, the heated debate on the This Morning Show with an old mate of mine, Jeremy Vine. Jeremy Vine, actually, I went on his show about two years ago and uh, there was about 7 million listeners and it actually kicked off the, uh, the media tirade um, because him and I had a disagreement about the ham sandwich on his table and I came at him, quote unquote, aggressively, created a lot of media, worldwide media, to do with me attacking him about his ham sandwich. So yeah, they got me back on the show to discuss the January, and I haven't had a chance to upload this or discuss it because everything has been happening with this morning show, but let's just watch through this together. We can see quite a different demeanor from me. I wasn't being challenged. I didn't just have seven minutes allocated for this whole debate. We had a, it was a bit more of a sit down. There was a panel there. Uh, they let me speak. It was really uh, quite a different type of TV appearance, but let's go through it together, shall we? Before the break, we asked how many animals will the January save this month? The answer is C, one million. Wow. One million animals, that's amazing. First though, I'd love your calls on this whole business of Veganuary, whether it's a good idea. With a new year comes a new chance to become a better version of yourself, as most people look to kickstart new eating habits. And it looks as if more and more of us are choosing to follow a vegan diet. This was today's headline. Veganuary is a campaign that sees participants eating a plant-based diet throughout January. And the meat and dairy industry are worried. Don't you worry about that. Can Campaigners following a vegan diet say it helps save the planet. We've now got even Meatloaf. This is in the star. There he is. <laughs> Meatloaf has gone vegan. Like a bite out of hell. She could call him vegan loaf. I know that was bad, but... <laughs> well, so now, Henry, you're not vegan because you love fish and chips, right? Uh, not just fish and chips, but like the occasional steak. Um, I'm, I'm omnivore, you know, like our closest relatives, you know, the great primates, uh, whom we have a common ancestor. I think, and you look at our incisors there, we, we evolved to eat both plants and meat. Most primates are herbivores, and you're pointing out two little tiny, tiny pointy teeth there, which literally is no evidence for anything does not justify the literal mass enslavement and holocaust of trillions of animals. Try again, my friend. And of course we cook and we process them now. And, I, and I can def I'll, I'll defend that, however. Be careful what you defend, my friend. You are defending some of the most horrific animal cruelty and torture on earth and the literal destruction of our planet. Be careful what you defend. I understand why increasing numbers of people are going vegan. Um, the nutritional benefits, uh, if you follow it really closely and you know exactly what you're doing. Um, don't act like it's harder to be healthy eating strictly whole plant foods than it is to be healthy eating corpses, dairy, eggs and whole plant foods. Okay, it's not can be amazing, including if you're a sports uh, person. And I saw a documentary called Game Changers, oh, yeah. in which even yeah. someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was obsessed yeah. with eating great big steak from Austria, <laughs> even he says, look, you, you can get amazing protein mm. from uh, a plant-based diet. So yeah. that made me think, hmm. So Arnold Schwarzenegger made you think, hmm, but science doesn't make you think, hmm. It's almost like people take, like, um, like a celebrity's word over a, over actual science. It's even though like what Arnold Schwarzenegger is saying is completely true. But what if there was a celebrity out there telling you that vegan diets are unhealthy? Are you going to take their opinion? This is what I mean. Opinions that are for veganism, you shouldn't listen to, and vegan and opinions that are against veganism, you shouldn't listen to. You should just listen to the mountains of science to support plant based diets that we have. Credible research from credible organizations. Let's continue. But I mean, yeah, th this one month thing, yeah, try it out, but I mean, not f as, for, as a lifestyle thing. Okay, so, what I've got for you, Henry, I have actually got some vegan fish and chips. Because I gather that vegan is it, it, the fish and chips problem for you would yeah. stop you going permanently vegan. Uh, See if you can just have a little look at that. This is, Maybe a this is meant to be fish, is it? This. this is, I know it's the wrong color. So, what is it? I, I don't know. I'm just it's looking temper. at the head. I don't see any eye there. Wait one second. It's Hold something on. called temper. Tempeh, and no, vegan food doesn't have eyes, and vegan food doesn't have bowel movements, or never had a bowel movement, like the pig that is chopped up on your plate. So yeah, it's just plants, mate. 
just plants. Tempura. Oh, well, yeah. like tempura. Soy, but based on soy. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Soy. So, so Larry, what do you think of being vegan as a nutritionist? Um, I think uh, having a plant-based based diet is good for everyone. Plant-based. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so I think we should all be eating more vegetables. Oh, he's um, gone. He's gone in I, for a second. He, he obviously quite likes it. Mm -hmm. um, well, he's I just going do, for the chips. <laughs> no, 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 I no. do have a problem with things like that because I don't me know too. how processed that is. And mm -hmm. I think if you are cook, I mean, intensive agriculture is, in my view, as damaging to the environment as uh, mm. intensive meat farming. I mean, the kind of pesticides washing into our rivers and our lakes and things is really worrying. I address this later on, so don't worry. So I think it's about eating better food. I have I have vegetarian diet. Um, people who come and see me and I say it's called vegetarian because it's about vegetables not it's not pasta chair and rice chair in or <laughs> falafel chair in it's vegetarian oh it's, interesting yeah, yeah. right a lot of there's nothing wrong with whole grains either so like I think she's a bit of a grainophobe obviously vegetables are healthier than whole grains but there's nothing wrong with whole grains vegans eat and vegetables eat things that actually aren't that healthy but you could do think it he's liking this you like not bad you know could go into this not really, no. no. <laughs> oh, that's the problem. <laughs> now, Greg's have today released a, a new vegan steak bake. And I've, it, what's interesting is I've, there, there's, there's one here that's vegan and there's one here that's a conventional steak bake. And I'm going to bring this over to two of our audience members. I'm going to remember which way they are. Um, and I think, is it Natalie and Neil here? Nigel. Nigel, Natalie and Nigel. OK, so, Natalie, you take this one here, okay. if you can. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying which it is. Nigel, if you take okay. that one, enjoy them. I'll come back to you in due course. Okay, so we've got, we've got that from Greg's. This is actually quite interesting, their reaction to these uh, steak bakes. One of them's not vegan and the other one is. It's also KFC have launched a new chickenless burger. Oh my gosh. Yeah, now how do you fancy that, Jamelia? No. <laughs> just, just, just take a look. It's got no murdered animal in it, so why are you freaking out from it? Look at it though, what would you make of that if oh someone said, it's a chicken burger with zero chicken? Yeah. Let's have a Do look at that. I don't, that. I don't get the whole it Looks fake, like a spicy bean burger. Like really? fake chicken and fake fish and all of that. They're just, I mean, the ve vegetables are nice. Can Corn I... Corn fillet, yeah, have a go. We're trying to cater to people who like chicken burgers, but we don't want chickens to be murdered. Very simple. Uh, no, 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 I don't want to have a go. Sorry. Is <laughs> 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 it warm no, for you? you? Yeah, is that Is cute? it warm? Um, but that's made yeah. with a corn fillet. But she probably would happily eat the tortured, murdered body of an innocent animal, which is what I don't understand. Can I make my an, an admission? Yeah. I've, I've um, well, my whole family, we've gone, we're doing Veganuary. Okay. And, um, okay. Yeah, it's, it, it, we're on day two and it's hell. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what it is? We didn't plan. Think about the hell that the animals go through when you're not doing Veganuary. And I think that's the main thing, it's, it's planning. So my uh, daughters and I, we, were, we were, came down to London um, yesterday from Birmingham and like we couldn't find anything to eat. Like, burg well, we ended up at Burger King and just had chips and it was just, it was disgusting. I don't usually like fast food, um, but yeah, um, I mean, I, if I... I'm, my office is based in central London and there's literally vegan options everywhere, peppered throughout London everywhere. There, I cannot believe this person couldn't find anything to eat in London, the most vegan friendly city on earth. Vegan options, there's people advertising, the, even the pubs and the, everywhere. The corner stores, the 24 hour convenience stores have vegan ice creams in the freezer. What are you talking about? Falafel wraps are everywhere, everywhere on the, there's like, KFC do vegan options for God's sake. There is literally vegan options in every Sainsbury's, Tesco's, supermarket, mall, uh, fast food place in London nearly, nearly everywhere. Like, what? I, that's just what I mean, like, she, she just doesn't know where to look or is she like, not looking at all. You get to cook it, then it's fine, but you need a pet lunch. All right. You don't need to pack lunch. I'm li that's literally not true in any way in London at all. Um, so yeah, that's completely wrong. Let's just check in here with, with Natalie and Nigel yeah. and see how they're doing. And I'm gonna to speak to Jerry Carbstrong here, who's, uh, yes, we know you. Yes, we know you, Jeremy. You remember me, I remember you. So first of all, Natalie, how's that? What do you think that is? Um, I think this is the vegan one. You think that's the vegan one? I think this is the vegan one. Oh. <laughs> so they both think it's the vegan one, so this is very interesting. Ah, oh, how interesting. So why do you think that's the vegan one? The Greg steak roll, vegan. 
Doesn't really taste very meaty. Doesn't taste meaty. No. This is a bad morning for Greg's, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Because there's no way they can win on this. What about yours? So you, well, that... I eat a lot of this sort of stuff, unfortunately. Yeah. But, um, and it doesn't taste like meat to me. No. Yeah, actually, Nigel is correct. Natalie, yours is the steak. No way. Yeah, yours is the real one. Nigel's is the vegan one. But yours one, your one tastes vegan. That's interesting. Yeah, because these things are so heavily processed and have gravy and salt all over them. It doesn't matter if there's a murdered animal in there. You can you can formulate the same type of macronutrient profile using plants and soya beans. And there's no need to chop someone up and put it in the pie because it's about what it's flavoured with, not that there's a hacked up body part in there. Mm, yeah. Are you enjoying it? Um, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry, sorry, Greg. <laughs> I'm with Jerry Carbstrong here. Thank you. Just keep going, by all means. Um, Jerry Carbstrong is a vegan activist. We, we've actually met before on my radio show. Have a listen. Well, I'm a bit upset to see your sandwich has a piece of a pig's body in there, a dead pig that didn't want to die. I obviously won't eat this sandwich now. In fact, I might never eat it, but it, it's offensive to see it. Well, it's more offensive. Uh, I believe it's more offensive to actually show me the piece of an animal who didn't want to die than it is to sort of call someone out for it. So this clip came from the radio interview I did on BBC Two on the Jeremy Vine show, which is a very large radio program. It had like 7 million listeners. And I got accused of being way too aggressive for the movement two years ago. So I'm like this radio interview, I got chastised by, you know, listeners and vegans. Oh my God, you're too aggressive. It made world news, world news. The gas chambers issue made world news because of it. So yes, I had a ham sandwich on the desk yes. when you came in. Yes, and I'd just been campaigning at the gas chambers in Manchester, hearing the pigs scream from the outside of the chamber. So seeing a piece of, a, of pork is really emotive for me at the time. But most people are disconnected from that whole process. So I understand people to see a ham sandwich, but they don't see the cruelty and violence. So. And so when you look at the steak here, w would you be upset about that? Yeah, well, see, it's completely disconnected from the animal there. It's minced up and it's in a pie form. So like, it, you really can't taste the difference. The vegan one tastes probably very similar to the meat one, but there's an animal in this one that suffered and died and there's plants in this one. And Larry made a point about um, Agriculture, plant agriculture being bad for the environment. Intensive. Well, yeah, intensive. Most of, most of those monocrops have been fed to animals that we then eat. Yeah. So oh, there's well, more... We eat wheat, that would say yeah. that's quite a monoculture. And ma magnitudes more plants and resources and land and water are being fed to the animals, which we then eat to get a small amount of steak. Yeah. So we're just better off eating the plants directly. And we have the, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which is the largest group of nutrition professionals on earth, uh, about 100 credited practitioners. Pause. It's actually 100,000 credited practitioners, not a hundred. So just let me, you know, fill that in there. And um, they released a peer reviewed position paper saying that vegan diets can be healthy for all stages of the life cycle, pregnancy, I think they can be, I think athletes, they can be, but- They definitely can be. So therefore the abuse, torture, killing and enslavement that we commit against animals every second of every day is completely unjustifiable. There is no doubt that there are nutrient deficiencies, B12 being the main one. There are nutrient one. deficiencies in all diet if you don't plan all diets well. Meat diets, if you don't plan them well, we should send to Because there was diet. a case, I saw a case over Christmas, a couple in the States who were arrested because their child died. And there was some yeah. comment about, oh, that, they've been on a vegan diet. But that's just bad parenting. Yeah. Yeah. That's, okay. that's nothing All to right. do with the whole foods plant-based diet. Now, I just ran 63 miles for New Year's. Um, I've already been running for four months. I've been vegan for six years. So you can definitely be a good athlete, as, uh, perform and thrive, okay. and there's no cruelty but in it's, violence. But it's, it's choice, right? We can eat meat if we want to. Well, if you're against animal cruelty and you eat meat, then you're practicing moral hypocrisy. I'd Are say. you? You can't, yeah. you, you can't just be moral blindness. No, moral blindness is willful ignorance, but you know that animals suffered and died in that stake. I know, you I know, just, so. I just blank And you're a good guy, I know you're against Oh, them. bless you're you, I, of course I'm, I'm against Do you have a dog them. at home? Do you have I have a dog at cats. home? No, I mean, cats? No, I wouldn't want to eat my cats. You wouldn't no. want to eat your cats? Well, I mean, I, I do, I, I went to an abattoir once and I saw a sheep being slaughtered and it did upset me and immediately afterwards I ate a sausage roll because I wanted to make sure, <laughs> I just want to make sure I could still eat meat after that. You said something about the fake chicken. At least you know in that chicken, no chicken has been, had yeah, their throat slashed yeah. open, you know? This tastes like real chicken. Exactly. I'm astonished, it's fantastic. And there's less resources and no yeah. animal had to get their head cut. Yeah, yeah, it's always good. Yeah. So I'm making the I'm making a very, you know, conscious choice to bring in the ethics at every point here. I'm familiar with Jeremy. He wasn't making me feel agitated or angry. He knows it's wrong. You know, he's just he's just a very he just blanks out the cruelty and just an, tries to be an unconscious meat eater. But he knows in his heart that it's wrong. I think he's deep. He I think he's a he's a good guy. 
but he just tries to forget about this issue so he can continue making these cruel choices through his diet. Um, as you can see, when I'm speaking, they're allowing me to get my points out fully, which I thought was great and respectful, and I felt very respected on this show. Um, the other debate was very different in energy. She wouldn't let me finish either. So it created this competitive, there's only two of us, we've got a limited amount of, t amount of time. This was a lot more chill. But Interestingly, I've got a whole piece. list of calories with, with the fake stuff, the vegan stuff, and it's very similar. So here the steak bake is, is 380 normally. Uh, sorry, 380 is the vegan, 408 is the normal. So it's, it's about isn't, the same. Isn't it so, everything in moderation, though? Yeah. It doesn't have to be healthier. It just in the same way you've got fast food options with meat, you can have fast everything, food options. Yeah, hang on, let's just... Yeah, well, we're trying to abolish the worst abuse and cruelty to animals on Earth. That's why we have a processed vegan version. Um, it's not all about health. Veganism literally has nothing to do with health. It just so happens a whole food plant-based diet is has very good health outcomes, if planned correctly, but... Veganism is strictly about animal ethics. We're creating these vegan options so there doesn't have to be a slaughterhouse to get steak bakes. We can just make plant steak bakes without knives in throats. So then some people phoned in, which was quite interesting. Take a look. From Lancashire says, my family is healthier since turning vegan. Oh. Go on, Claire. Hello there. Hi, thanks for having me on. Um, I haven't eaten meat for nearly 30 years. I had five pregnancies without any meat in it. And then we went vegan three years ago and we've never felt healthier. That's, that's good. And, so we, you and, hadn't eaten meat and then your whole family went to vegan. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. We, um, we were vegetarian and then we switched to vegan diet three years ago. But just I on see. the B12 um, supplement thing... I've worked for the NHS for a long, long time, so I have my blood work done every single year. And never in my 30 years of eating meat have I ever, ever needed one B12 supplement. OK, all right. My Thank children are thriving and healthy on a vegan diet. OK, thanks, Claire. Thank you. William. Natalie from London says people are being sheep. Now, Claire doesn't realise that a lot of the food that she eats would be fortified with B12, so I think it's bit irresponsible of her to say, I don't, no one needs, or like she's saying, I've never needed a B12 supplement. You don't realize that a lot of the cereals and, and uh, soya milks are all fortified with B12, nutritional yeast, and a lot of the packaged products we use. If you're not eating any fortified food, please take a B12 supplement. Even if you are uh, eating fortified food, please take a B12 supplement. It's just safety measures and trust me, B12 deficiency, it doesn't have very good outcomes for you. So just don't let that happen. Thanks, Claire. But really, to be responsible advocates, we should recommend a B12 supplement for everyone. And following the crowd. Which people is this, Natalie? Um, I just feel like society just follows the crowd a lot and every year there's something new and... Well, uh, if we were going to follow the crowd, the popular view is to eat meat, dairy, and eggs. So if anything, vegans are going against the status quo. So we are anything but following the crowd. Obviously, you have celebrities and high influences that push these sort of diets, like these, these vegan diets. And half the time, if you notice, these products that they push, they, they don't even use themselves. So I just feel like, you know, I'm a vegetarian myself and I'm happy with that. I'm healthy. Um, I just don't feel like people should um, change their diet or lifestyle just because everyone else is doing it. I think people need to have their own minds and think well, about... Don't worry, I've got a response for her. Joey, you're, uh, Joey's yeah. an evangelist here, aren't you, basically? You should do it for the right reason. Veganism's not a diet, it's a moral principle which yeah. extends to your diet. So if you're against animal cruelty, animal abuse, environmental destruction, then the best thing you can do in your life is to eat a plant-based diet and avoid those products that abuse and exploit animals. OK, William. See, nice and calm, rational response. I felt listened to. They let me get my full point out. No problem. Let's go. Yes, John from Kent says, I'm trying Veganuary to help the environment. Ah, how's it going, John, on day two? Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not going bad, thank you. Yeah, have, you, have, you succumbed, would... have you succumbed to a burger yet? Jeremy, there's something called a vegan burger, dude. Look it up. Beyond Burger, Impossible Burger, the No Bull Burger. Choose your bloody burger. It doesn't have to have literal corpse in the burger, okay? God.
So I, I first ate RSPCA or organic milk meat a few years ago. Is they're good compared with, say, battery chickens, which are usually fast growing breeds, so they get arthritis or lameness. And then I see Jeremy's face there. Look at him. Oh, he's being confronted with a bit of truth there. Arthritis and lameness of the battery chickens. See, he's got a bit of a heart there. See, he he just practices willful ignorance, old Jezza. Eventually went vegetarian um, as I learned how the method of mechanized stunning is often ineffective. So oh. battery chickens are often conscious when they're slaughtered. Um, no, going it's terrible. Of course better. it's cruel. I, don't, I always don't need persuading. I just I just try and blank, blank it when I eat stuff. That's, I know everyone's don't. laughing back here. Come on, Jeremy. Like, I don't know what to say to you. Like, at least... This is the thing. This is why Jeremy didn't agitate me. He was admitting that it was wrong. He wasn't sitting there trying to go, well, in the UK, uh, animals are actually butchered humanely. And animal cruelty is okay because in the UK, it's high welfare. And, or just sitting there trying to justify something that's obviously cruel. Heavily says, not for me, thanks. I don't want others' agendas and opinions pushed on me. I will eat what I want and what I can afford. Uh, well, you know what? Uh, you're pushing literally through your food choices, pushing pigs into gas chambers, pushing um, chickens down the kill floor to get strung up by their little leg and slashed across the throat. The only beings who are having agendas pushed on them are the animals who are literally having knives pushed in their throats so you can push a burger down your throat. And also you say, I'll eat what I want and what I can afford. Can you aff afford rice and beans and legumes and fruits and vegetables can you afford a iphone to type that message onto the you know for onto facebook what do you mean what you can afford what you think like meat is somehow cheaper than you know the 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 whole grains and bread and and vegetables and you know what are you trying to say cereal and soya milk soya milk's on par if, if anything it can be cheaper 59p in audi for soya milk like, what do you mean? Chris says it's an excellent idea. Not everybody will go for it, but the more that do, the better for everybody. Very good, Chris. Uh, are you sure that wasn't Chris Hines, maybe? Or Chris Del Force? I don't know, but sounds like a vegan, Chris. I don't know. Christine, we've got the Greg sausage rolls here. There we are, Two, you can just see them on camera four here. Uh, and I'll read out the calories. The vegan sausage roll 311, the normal sausage roll 317. So I, uh, yeah, there's not much difference. There is a lot of difference. Maybe there's not much difference in calories, which you shouldn't be focusing on exclusively the calories, Jeremy, old Jezza. Maybe you should be focusing on the fact that some six-month-old pig didn't get pushed into a dungeon filled with CO2 gas and struggle for their last breath, beg for mercy and have a knife stuck into their jugular and be chopped up into a million pieces and ground up and put in the other sausage roll. You should focus on that, my friend. And, you know, I know Jeremy doesn't like animal cruelty. He obviously cringes at the reality of animal cruelty. Uh, the next step for Jeremy is just to stop being hypocrite, basically, old Jeremy, and uh, start being consistent with the way you feel. And um, he couldn't kill an animal himself. He wouldn't want to, you know, sit there and see chickens be murdered before he eats them. So maybe he should just uh, eat the vegan food. All right, so that was a Jeremy Vine appearance. A lot of, a, a much different energy in the, the, the studio there with Jeremy Vine. Yeah, and you know, that's just one of the days where it went smoothly. And I still think that the debate on uh, this morning went good for other reasons. I had a no nonsense approach to the, the hunter. Um, with Jeremy Vine, he admits it, it's cruel and it didn't sprawl out into a big heated debate. It didn't need to. The nutritionist wasn't, um, coming back at me really hard. We were all basically in agreement. Like I didn't feel any, you know, opposition, real opposition in the room. Even with the callers, there was no real opposition. So yeah, that was the Jeremy Vine TV appearance. Uh, they've got a good reach on their channel, Channel 5. Okay, so I just want to say to anyone who's not vegan watching, stop being a hypocrite, stop paying for the worst abuse on earth through your dietary choices. I mean, come on, it's 2020 now. We need to put these gas chambers in museums and just look at them and say we should never repeat this history ever again. You know, we, sh we need to shut down all slaughterhouses and, you know, non-vegans need to stop being hypocrites and stop claiming to care about animal cruelty while they're eating it and go vegan already. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.